Right. So we are back again. Bryce and I have just had our coffee chat and we are back today on the 10th of February for the first time on our Discover Your Passion series with the amazing Lucy Davis. So how are you doing, Lucy? Hello, ladies. Oh, it's so amazing to be here with you both. Um, very excited. Been looking forward to this since our last chat, Catherine. So, um, and and your little uh, offline chat with me about it. It's got me really excited because I'm like, this is everything. This is this is everything that I do. So um, apologies in advance if I get extremely passionate as I get go through this today. <laughs> No apologies either. We, we want you to be extremely passionate. That's the energy we want. So let <laughs> it we're, up, girl. we're in that mood today, aren't we, Bryce? We've just had our chat and we're just feeling, we were just saying just before we started, that just feeling like spring is the air. I do feel like a little spring bunny. No rude jokes, everyone. Um, but <laughs> that feels a kind of, Why not? <laughs> you know, it's the UK. Yeah, we like a little bit of rude jokes. A little bit of innuendo is right up my street. <laughs> um, but Lucy, before we really get into the discussion, now obviously you've been on my channel before, but not on Bryce's. So can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Of course, with absolute pleasure. Um, so my name is Lucy Davis. You can probably tell from my accent that I am from the UK. Um, however, for quite some time, I was traveling between, um, or I was based between Australia and the UK. Um, and wherever my heart was called, so if I ever got an intuitive pull to go somewhere, I would hop on a plane and I would go and I would always find myself in an amazing magical situation whereby I would cross paths with an incredible healer or I would cross paths with somebody and they would almost like not give me a physical gift but they would give me a gift and a few weeks after I'd met them I'd be like wow didn't know I could do that kind of thing so um I have lived my life 100% intuitively since 2017 um prior to that I was working on the trading floor for investment banks for my sins. Um, I did that up until 2014 when I burnt out physically. Then I took 14 months off of that and went on a massive self-healing journey, which is where I truly believe that I, I was given my awakening. Um, I'm actually writing a book, my book at the moment about this journey. And, and so it, every time I speak it, I'll kind of get really emotional. So um, if I get emotional today, you know why. Um, and then in 2015, I went back to the trading floor and I promised myself it would be maximum two years. Um, and I did 22 months and then I was out the door. Uh, and I'm very, very proud since then. I've been coaching people. Um, I started in regard to health and, and healing. Now it's very much around um, I use my intuition to help people get whatever it is that they need. So that may be a breakthrough in relationships. It may be a breakthrough because they've got a tumor or something like that. And, you know, and that's just the way that I navigate now. Um, I also mentioned to you previously, because I know this is very aligned with you, Catherine, I'm qualified in iridology so sometimes when somebody comes to me and, and maybe they've got a tumor or maybe they've got um, a health issue and they can't quite grasp how they've brought it in energetically and spiritually I will use iridology as a tool so that they can physically grasp how they have brought this in and and how this is manifested in their body so um that's a very, very long story short. It's been an absolute wonderful um, journey, very, very much intuitive led. You know, if I feel like I need to go to a country and quite interestingly, my visa has just been approved to go back to Aus Australia. Now I put that in about 18 months ago and of course I was blocked every time and literally in the last few days it's been approved and I'm like, okay, what does Australia need right now? I mean, obviously, we know what Australia needs right now. Um, and it's just very, very interesting that all of a sudden now I can go back. So um, obviously, they're, they're ready for some of the magic now, I hope, and I pray for them. Can I ask you, before 2014, when you had your awakening, when you were a child, through your teenage years, all that early adulthood, did you have spiritual experiences or was did something just happen where all of a sudden Pandora's no. box opened? No, really good question. And thank you for asking that. So until I was about 10, I was a bright little button. I, w I had invisible friends, which obviously we know aren't invisible friends. Um, you know, I, I would have conversations and I would literally round up all the children and, and animals would just be constantly around me. Like I was really, really um, spiritually awake, although obviously I didn't know that at the time. And my parents were not 
uh, aligned to that at all at that period. And when I was 10 years of age, I was in an exam um, over here in the UK. We'd have to take an exam to decide whether we go to a grammar school or not. And I was in that exam and a boy had an epileptic fit. And it was that moment I decided to like just switch everything off because it didn't make sense to me. And I just started focusing on my schooling and my education. And from there, I went on this huge spiral um, of self-sabotage because I just wasn't aligned with what I was doing. Like I was never meant to work in an investment bank. I don't know how I did it. You know, like I look back and I'm like, wow, they, they groomed me through that. To, because they could see the light that I had and they could see the gifts that I had with people that, that don't come naturally to people unless they are aligned with much lighter things, you know. So um, it was a looking back, and this is why um, the book is being written now, It looking back, it's been like it was obvious from, from a young age, but I chose to switch it off because I guess I was scared. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that funny? Like kids, uh, our friend Liz... Um, who did a Catherine sweatshirt and t-shirt I have on under this. She's brought this up before because we both, I'm from Georgia um, and she's from Tennessee and this is the Bible Belt. And so there's a lot of, um, with the religious matrix. And we even talked about that with her little boy, her precious little two-year-old Levi. You know, children are born knowing God, knowing source. Children are born. They don't have to find, go find the creator they don't have to go find angels they're just born like seeing them and knowing them and it's when we insert them into this controlled um matrix that that starts to be like taken and closed off from them and so um do you remember seeing like your imaginary friends or seeing like the angels or seeing that yeah i do and and what's really interesting is i've got two little half sisters and they're only nine um, so there's a massive age difference between myself and them. But what's really beautiful now is they're getting to that age whereby I obviously decided that I was going to step out of it. So I'm nurturing them and reminding them about the fairies. And they often say, because fairies were my thing when I was little, I would see the angels, but I would often see fairies. And of course, my older sister thought I was crazy. My mum thought I was crazy, but I could see fairies I could feel the elemental energy coming through and what's really interesting is one of my little sisters said to me just a few weeks ago but fairies aren't real people keep telling us at school they're not real so I'm working with them to remind them of the mysticism and the magic um and and I see that as a true gift because obviously I was only a little bit older than them when I decided nope I'm not going to do this anymore so um in answer to your question yes I remember my invisible friend, like I could probably draw you a picture, probably not a very good one, but I could probably draw you a picture. And now I know that that's somebody who still comes to me in spirit and guides me when I'm obviously working with people. So it's, it's beautiful. That's a lot. I mean, like to go, you know, cause I, I, I think Catherine and I, I mean, I don't want to speak to you Catherine, but I, when I was a child, I would see angels. I would see spirits. I would see demons. I saw everything. And you're right. Yeah you go through these and I had some weird in my teenage years experiences with some spiritual attacks and it kind of followed me, even though I tried to push it away as, as well. Um, but when, when we, and it's, I guess when 2014 happened for you and that door was kind of opened again, what was that like? Was it like a coming home or did you, were you resistant to it or were you mm -hmm. like, Oh, duh, I need to go back here again. Well, what's really quite interesting is out of nowhere, something has just fallen over there. So that's just a, that's just an angel letting us know. <laughs> I was like, OK, thank you for that. <laughs> um, so actually what happened was in 2013, my granddad died. And as my granddad was um, in his last weeks, he kept saying to me, Lucy, you're here to shine your light. Lucy, you're the sunshine. You're supposed to remind people. And he kept saying, are you happy? And he was on his deathbed. So I was like, of course, I'm happy. But I was completely lying to him, completely lying to myself. And I actually see him as the catalyst that started me on this journey. And then in 2014, my, my physical body burned out. And I truly believe my guides, the angels, whoever, I've just got goosebumps all down my side. Um, they basically said, we're just going to push her until she has to stop now and she has to immerse in this. And exactly like you said, when I took that first step, it was like I'd gone home and I could breathe again. 
Mm. It was such a relief. I'd been lead, leading this life that I felt so restricted and so held back and, and almost like I couldn't breathe. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm like, I can see and everything seemed brighter and everything just seemed, and although I was in a bit of a pickle with my health, I'll be honest with you, you know, I had severe digestive issues, hormone issues, you know, tumors in the womb, you name it, I had it all going on. And it was, it was just such a gift because if I didn't have all of that, I, 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 it was obviously what I chose for my awakening this lifetime, because if I hadn't had that go on, would I be here today? I don't know. Mm. It's so fascinating hearing you say that. So so much that resonates with me in terms of when I stepped out of the um, corporate career and went into doing what everyone thought I was completely mad about, giving up my good career, et cetera. And it felt to me like I was going back home and at no stage did I ever feel it was the wrong decision or it wasn't going to be what I wanted in terms of success, not what other people wanted in terms of success. But one of the things I'd like to sort of really have a little chat about is people that are watching this, everyone's story is different. So I've spoken quite a lot, Lucy and Bryce, about I love Joe Dispenza. And one of the things he teaches is we can hit rock bottom and that will give us different doors will open and options will come to us or we can not hit rock bottom. So I didn't hit rock bottom. I didn't have a major sort of crisis that made me do that. But there is no right or wrong. Everyone's journey is completely unique. So when people are watching this and they're thinking, well, I don't remember my friends or I do this, it doesn't matter, does it? Because you're all exactly where you're meant to be. It's such a cliche, but it's just about what I love about the way you talk, Lucy, is is it's about really where are you now and where do you need to be and where do you want to be going? The story is important, but everyone's story is and can be completely different yeah and and a really important piece of what you've just said Catherine is that we've been we all need to acknowledge that we've been living in a paradigm where we have been controlled to compete yeah controlled to compare and this is this is like why I value self-love and Mm. self-acceptance and and I turn everything on self you know if somebody annoys me I'm like okay what have I done here like what and and the reason that I always do that is because we we are have been under this matrix and we've been under this spell whereby it's normal to be like oh well I didn't burn out like that so I'm never going to get her gifts when in reality you don't need to you made a commitment you you signed a soul contract whether you remember it or not is completely irrelevant you signed a soul contract and you were I decided to be very very sick to be able to awaken some people bless their souls picked abuse physical you know that kind of thing like they've emotional abuse and that's their awakening other people have been through so many lives that they this lifetime it was you know breaking a nail on a particular day that made them get their awakening you know so wherever you are in your journey if you find yourself comparing call yourself out on it yeah we have you a know, saying here, comparison is the thief of joy. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's not serving anybody other than the people that have held us under their spell for a very long period of time. And if you think about it, you know, whatever your belief system is, whether you think, you know, the devil is the dark side or whatever, like they've played a blinder by, you know, weaving their way through every area of life, through our food, through our looks, through our, like literally through everything. So we are under this spell of, oh, wow, you know, Bryce's got such beautiful hair. Like I wish I had her hair, you know, because you can't possibly be happy with your own hair because whatever you've got, you want something different. And spirituality and, and stepping into your, you know, your, your purpose and your passions, exactly the same. Mm. Yeah. It's so unique. And I, I just think that's a really important message because I get a lot of people writing to me at the moment and sort of very much in terms of, well, I can't because this is my story is different or my story is different. And you are so right, Lucy, that has been so programmed into people 
that there's a way of achieving it. And there's, we were just talking about this earlier, actually, weren't we, Bryce? There's so many different ways. There's, so, there's an infinite number of answers. There's an infinite number of ways to get somewhere. You know, we hear it a lot in the diet and nutrition, which, you know, we've both got some of that in common. But there's so many different ways to achieve your goal. And, and one of the things that I really love, and on your um, website I saw it this morning, is that you are a master at asking questions. And that's what Bryce and I are passionate about, And is that, you know, just stay in that questioning mode. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's something I actually pride myself on. And I've actually got a team of coaches who work with me now because my business has expanded so quickly. And I say to them every single time we speak, become the master question asker. And, and become the master question asker from your heart, not mm. from a place of defensiveness. Right. Because what happens normally is if you don't get your own way, you get on the defensive and you react. And that doesn't serve anybody. And this is where this, you know, this ego paradigm, which we've been living in for such a long period of time, really kicks up. You know, you could say to somebody um, something that triggers their ego and then you could say something really beautiful to them and they'll have a reaction because they're still feeling the emotion from previous. It's very important if we can drop into our heart space and rather than assume, become vulnerable and ask questions, constant, constant questions. I, you know, I find myself asking really basic questions sometimes because I hear a word and I'm like, OK, this word means this to me but I'm not sure if that's what they're talking about. And actually it pacifies everything. If you're vulnerable enough to just say, what did you mean by that? You know, could you clarify what you mean by this particular word? Or I've interpreted it as this. Can you just confirm I've interpreted it correctly? You know, but most people won't do that because they're, they're scared of being rejected or they're scared of looking silly or, you know, they're, They've got this bravado that they need to carry. But the thing is, is that hasn't served us for the last, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So unless we recognize that we're all different, we're all experiencing, some of us could be experiencing the same thing, but feeling totally different. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Well, there is no such thing as reality. It's all perception, you know, it's all how we exactly. perceive it. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's, I can't, when you talk about that, I keep thinking about just a small comparison it's like when you're texting with someone mm. and you miss it because you're not hearing them speak you're reading it through your voice yes. and how many arguments have started because a text was perceived wrong it's the same thing in conversation too you know it's um it's it's uh back in the late uh, early 2008 2009 ish but when uh iphones were first coming out when i lived out in los angeles at that point and there was this tv show that this guy was doing about dating and at that point, text message here in the United States was still relatively new. Most people still would call. And I remember the guy saying at that point, you know, don't ever text someone unless it's something like I'm running late, you know, something very clear, always call them instead. Well, of course, now what do we all do? We all just text each other. But I think about that a lot about how the misunderstanding, the miscommunication that people have, it, it causes a lot of issues that are not actually necessary in the long run. But I like what you're saying too, because my background is, is traditional yoga and it goes very much into like, you know, Prakriti versus Purusha, nature versus the spirit and everything you experience as far as emotion is really coming from this place of nature and is really for your, your soul just to watch and learn from. Why did I handle that this way? Why did this piss me off? Why, why, why? What am I attached to that's not serving me anymore? That's actually disconnecting me from source because I'm too focused on this attachment that is even just, that's just my own perception. It's not even real. You know, it's the grand illusion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the most interesting piece of what we're collapsing right now is a massive part of the population do not see the illusion. Yeah. And that's where, you know, this argy bargy or this belief that, you know, there, there needs to be this, um, you know, a little bit of friction is coming from. And I don't know about you ladies, but I'm seeing it a lot more at the moment because we are rattling everybody, like literally everybody's being shaken up right now. And normally, you know, people that are normally very calm and collected are all of a sudden having outbursts because they physically don't know how to cope with the fact that they're watching the illusion collapse 
like you know or at least their perceived belief of reality they're watching that collapse and they don't really know how to deal with it it's interesting oh sorry i was going to say do you think ladies that going back to the communication aspect i was taught very early on actually in my corporate career back in the days where we used to have to stand up and do a lot of presentations and things that you know communication is a two-way thing it's not you giving your message to someone it's not completed until you've checked that your message has been received and understood by the person you're giving the message to because we've got whole generations now that have grown up leaving voice messages you know you know text in our day and then now it's on to voice message and things but even leaving a voice message is very much you giving yours. You're not receiving anything back from it. And so I think that skill of receiving has the other person, have the other parties received and understood and are you on the same wavelength is, is completely missing from most people's lives and on all levels, on a personal level, on a work level. And what you were saying, Lucy, there about, you know, people are seeing the, not seeing the illusion because there's been no conversation around any of this. Yeah. And when there is conversation, people have massive reactions about it because mm. we're really challenging people's belief systems right now. Yeah. Everything that we've ever perceived to be real, we are now having to say, okay, maybe I was wrong. Yeah. And quite often, that's the most tough thing for somebody to say, isn't it? Right. It's so funny. Oh, though. I don't know if you guys know much about ganache. This is a little ganache my friend Mina Gupta gave me. Um, You've given me a message, you know. so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? That was just a message for me, so thank you. Oh, oh well, that's why I felt I needed to show it. Yeah. Well, Ganesh is uh, one of the avatars in the Hindu faith, and he has big, huge ears. He has an elephant head, a human body. He has big, big old ears and his tiny mouth. And it's so he can hear more and talk less. And he is the, the bringer of the remover of obstacles and the bringer of obstacles that are serving your highest good. And it's like that whole saying, when you listen to, when you're having a conversation, you're lis listen to someone to understand, not to respond. Yes. And I, I, as you're, I just thinking about my, my little Ganesh here that Mina yeah. Gupta gave me years ago in India. So um, sits on my desk every day, but um, listen to understand someone, not to respond. And I was telling Catherine the other day, my sister, you know, here in the state of Georgia, we don't have, you know, here in America, we're really learning the value of a republic, the states kind of being their own territories, which before that was never really noticed, I don't think, by many people because different states are under different rules yeah. right now by that bunch um yeah. and my state is a very conservative state so we don't have this and we don't have you know it's not it's not a big deal here but my sister she was in the fortunate situation that she was able to pull her kids out of public school and put them into a private school so they wouldn't have to yeah. um when this all started and they could just be normal kids but i was telling Catherine, my sister who is like us um she was having when this all started the global thing of 2020 started she was having a conversation on the phone with her son my nephew's best friend's mother and she realized in that conversation because here we are like getting annoyed with people who are buying into it buying into it but in that moment she realized how afraid this woman was and she all of a sudden felt so much empathy and compassion for the place that this woman was in whereas she knows it's not you know but to hear that, to actually, the fact that she actually heard that, not just in her ears, but in her heart, that this woman was actually terrified for her life, for her children's life. She was trying to do the right thing under these scary situations. And when my sister told me that, when she realized that, it changed my perception on a lot of people. Like, oh my God, like how scary would that be to be living in that world where you literally think there is something out there that's going to take you out, yeah. you know? It's a, it's a real skill what your sister did, though, you know, because it's very few people that can actually allow that feeling when it goes totally against their belief system to actually allow that feeling of somebody else to hit. So that's so it's kudos to her, you know, really kudos to her. And, and I feel, um, especially in the early days, there was very few people that, were, that had the ability to do that. Like my mum, unfortunately, was was very scared. So I had to learn very quickly that there was fear in people that, and they truly, truly believed in it, even though I didn't at all, um, you know, didn't buy into it at all, not even for one second. And 
but very quickly because it was my mum I had to step into that space and there were times don't get me wrong that I was like this like this is crazy I can't get my head around what you're thinking but the fact that you know I've known my mum for all of my life and she's not crazy and she's not normally a scaredy cat or anything like that so it was a very real situation and I just you know, again, I just think kudos to your sister for allowing herself to remember she's got two ears and one mouth for a reason, because a lot of people don't seem to remember that these days. They they just hear a word and they react or something. And and again, it's all part of this paradigm. It's all part of this control and this, you know, this indoctrination that we've all been in. Yeah. And it's funny too, you were saying earlier about, you know, this illusion that we've all been, been in and we were having a conversation with an older person a while ago trying to explain because they're kind of halfway there, this person in my life, but we were trying to explain like what was really going on or what we perceived to be going on. And this person just looked up and, and she goes, so you mean to tell me everything in my whole life has been a lie? And that hit me because I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, that's basically what we're telling you. And that that realization that for an older person, especially like their whole life have been a lie. And that struck me. I was like, so a lot of people are fighting against that feeling of like, I can't believe this because that means that everything I've held to be true is basically BS. Yeah. Or for me, I'm excited. I'm like, yay. That means everything. I know <laughs> this is the interesting thing, isn't it? Is, is that everyone's reaction to that being that realization that if that everything in your life up until then has been a lie everyone reacts to that differently you know we're like oh that's really exciting because we thought something was off but we didn't know what it was and other people it's completely terrifying and i've got a twin sister and you know she loves roller coasters and i hate roller coasters but physiologically, if we're standing in that queue, it's the same reaction going through our bodies. But she's interpreting that as excitement and I'm interpreting that as fear. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? Really fascinating. It's actually a really good example, though, that you've just given there, Catherine, because we all or I don't, a lot of people out there, um, particularly, you know, where the truth movement has been concerned, everybody's but, but we're right we're right we're right yeah. but actually you are spot on with what you're saying two people can look be looking at exactly the same thing and be feeling complete different things and actually see different things as well absolutely if, if all three of us were stood in a line looking at a beach i guarantee someone would notice the colors more than the animals running on the on the surface or do you get what i mean we'd all see different things and that's what we need to keep coming back to like none of us are right Mm -hmm. because right and wrong again is just an illusion it's all based on your experience and what you're choosing to experience this lifetime and I do feel like um I keep being shown that April is going to be a bit really big period of time for um kind of like a mass awakening on the planet so whether that happens or not who knows but I pray I pray for everybody that everybody even the people that have been really not wanting to look at the fact that their 60 70 80 however many years have been a lie can start to recognize whatever it is they need to recognize so that they can find their peace right mm -hmm. right and and that's something that we uh, you know i there's a post that keeps going around the social media is like god woke you up for a reason god woke you up for a reason and i think too even in this community what we have to start taking in that compassion as well because i know that I've had people try to take my authorization away from me from being a Mr. T supporter. That's my job to teach. I've had so much smear campaigns. People in my life I felt were my friends just because I was a Mr. T supporter and because I was talking about the stuff that they thought was just conspiracy junk, you know, especially with the little, you know, have to be careful what we say on YouTube, but you guys know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, and to have that anger inside of yourself, but to know that, that, that you're, there's going to come a point probably very soon where you're going to have to swallow your pride and be there with open arms yeah. to hold these people and tell them it's going to be okay, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and be the bigger person and, and put all that anger, anger aside to help, to help. I mean, Catherine knows one of my favorite quotes is a Ram Dass quote and it's, we're all just walking each other home. Yeah. We're all just walking each other home. And, um, and that's going to be something that we're, we're all in this community, hopefully very soon are going to have to put on our big boy panties and underwear and like, 
be able to swap, be that Ganesh with the big ears and the small mouth and, uh, and allow these people that we're mad at to have our, our energy and our shoulder to cry on as we help them. Yeah, I love, I love that you've said that because I think it was about April 2020 um, that I actually said that and people were like, no chance, not going to happen. And I mean, this was way before we even went down this route. Yeah. So you can imagine now, mm. you know, and it's, you, I, I'm, I'm starting to see the anger in people that have gone along with it and have done as they're told. And I think that's the really important piece here. People have done as they're told because they want an easy life. They want to get back to normal, whatever normal looks like to them. And we can't, we can't hold that against them. Right. You know, like I don't blame them. Like mm-hmm. there's been times where I've gone, God, Lucy, wouldn't it just be easier just to not know about any of this stuff? Exactly. Yeah. You know, but also the other flip side of that is I'm not sure physically, emotionally, spiritually, how you would cope with that all of a sudden it being in front of your face. So, you know, I'm very grateful for the path that I've walked. I'm very grateful that I listened to the calls. But at the same time, exactly what you say, Bryce, we do have to love on these people more than we've ever loved on anyone or anything in our lives yeah. Because this is this is the future of the world that we're going to be doing here. It's time for unification. It's time to come back together, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Can I just put another thing into the melting pot there? Is there's another scenario, and of course there's every possible option in between, that we're not going to get the disclosure that yeah. we all think there is. That there could be a way of moving forward without people finding out. So we will still have the label of conspiracy theorists and look, nothing what you said has happened has come true. And I think for me, that's something that I've been sitting with, so certainly since Christmas thing and saying hand on heart, that to me has really made me look at where I'm at and how will I handle that if that's the scenario that happens as well. And I thought it's very real actually and and I and I actually feel that although I still feel that there's going to be this awakening of people in Mm. April I don't think it's going to be the way that we wanted it to be yeah like I I, and I think we've got to accept that now I don't believe any of the you know the stuff about the the lady the top of the royals here in the UK I don't think that's going to come out I don't think anything about the the, you know, the little beans, as I call them. Um, I, d- I just don't see that because imagine the trauma. Yeah. Exactly. I was about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've said that before. Like if there was, you know, for most of us, I think it was, we've been able to take these like stepping stones where we yeah. figure one thing out. And then and Kat and I just talked about this because I've said mm-hmm. before on, on our shows that I'm kind of bored with like the political stuff and the medical <laughs> stuff. And the, I'm ready to talk about the future. <laughs> like, let's, let's, let's move out of that. Like that's the catalyst that brought us, but let's talk about the future. Let's talk about off worlders and the, and the fact that we might be living for 400 years soon. And like that the earth itself is transcending into this lighter density of positivity. Let's talk about that. Like that's where yeah. I want to go. <laughs> but you know, but but it is but imagine like just imagine if you are one of your friends or family members who's had blinders on and has been just like nope this is all the life i'm living is the real truth and you're all crazy and blah 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 and then all of a sudden if we get that ebs whatever happens all of a sudden they're forced to look at everything in one go whose nervous system could handle that nobody's they just have okay. And is it constructive as well? Is that no. is that moving the planet forward? That's been my question, and I've got so much stick from it for people. But, you know, from my ego perspective, I'd love my sisters to know this was all true, but that's from my ego's perspective. Do I think it's constructive from a planetary moving us forward to a higher vibration? I think that would bring the planetary vibration down so quickly. It's just my opinion. And therefore, I, I, I think it's going to be a fascinating one for us all and yeah. people watching here. How will we handle it if the truth doesn't come out? Yeah. And, and it's a really good question. It's a really good question, because if you think about it, they, they showed me this quite a few years ago. There was going to be these waves of people waking up. It always had to be a wave. So, you know, if you think about where the, um, you know, the lockdown period started, it was the, the women were getting, because we were protective over the, the mm-hmm. bubbles, right? So the women came, boom, we came online. 
And then all of a sudden there's other things that started coming out. And and I just seen everything as a wave. Now yeah. they picked us for a reason because we could handle it. So we've handled it. So I see this next bit. We are the ones that are going to have to just learn how to handle it because we are, you know, we have been through the mill with it. We have, we are tired we do want right. the truth to come out and everything like that. But at the same time, we've shown our resilience. We've shown our integrity. We've shown our passion. And I truly believe that actually all of this stuff with regards to the EBS and bits and pieces, I, I just think it's noise now. Yeah. I really do think it's noise. I, I just don't see that timeline taking place. Right. I just don't see it. Yeah. And I think, you know, as far as like, you know, people's big complaint is that, we all need to know what was what's happening so it doesn't happen again. Well, here's my thing. Too many of us know now for it to happen again. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Um, second of all, where we're going, what's been prophesized in all of the religious texts, astrologically, through the law of one, all these different channelers who are coming from different backgrounds have all said the same thing right now. Earth itself is third density, which is polarity, the, the density of polarity and as it goes into fourth density positive there's not going to be that polarity anymore which is a world i don't think any of us really even understand how to fathom but we're getting there and so if there's not going to be that polarity in a fourth density positive planet none of that stuff can exist anyway yeah so as you're saying is it necessary for everyone to know is it necessary for every single human being that moves ascends into this new density to actually understand everything we know is that necessary probably not no I I just feel that it's really interesting because I've been having this conversation over the last few days. So it's really interesting that we've got to this point again. There's obviously something uh -huh. extremely important that we need to speak about, right? I I keep seeing, I mean, we've had such um extreme polarity, right? The the atrocities, like the 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 depths of the negativity and, and the depths of where people have taken this. And then the heights that people have taken this, it's, it, I mean, it's just so extreme right now. And I don't think there's very many people that haven't already gone through it on the planet that could handle it. Yeah. Physically, you know, without even looking at the emotional and the, the spiritual side of things, physically, I don't think people, you know, people would have heart attacks. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, yeah. That they, 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 their physical body would not know what to do with it. I mean, I speak quite openly to both of my parents. Um, perhaps not at the level that I could do with the knowledge that I've got, but I know if I pushed it any further, they would start to have physical issues, premised off of what I'm sharing with them because it's horrific. Yeah. What we have been witness to is absolutely horrific, and um, exactly what Bryce said. There's too many of us. There's no way. I mean, even me on my own, there's no way we're going back there. Yeah. No yeah. way. Like I will fight if I have to. And Catherine, you've probably heard me say that a lot. You know, I'm, I used to fight professional Muay Thai. So if I need to fight, I will fight if I have to. But I don't see it being like that. Genuinely, I don't see it being like that. I see there's got to be a change in systems now. There has to be a collapse. Obviously, um, Catherine, I know you know, but I'm, I'm working with a guy called Paul Boys over here yeah. in the UK, and we are literally setting up new systems. doesn't matter about the old ones. They don't work. Let's not give them the energy. Let's create the new and take whoever wants to come with us. Let's go. Yeah. You know, that's, that's my passion right now is we we've sat in the trenches if you like for long enough um and it's time now to say right we know it's not over back there but unless we create the future unless we create what can then be adopted by other people around the world or whatever we're continuing to hold ourselves back we're not actually allowing humanity to step forwards exactly because energy flow you know, is where attention goes. And if we truly believe that, it's so important that as many people as possible live that. So what, Bryce and I have spoken loads, Lucy, about this, this balance, this seesaw balance between sometimes some information is really important to help you course correct and make different decisions in your life but that is different for everyone so for example i don't need to go to a factory farm now to know what happens at slaughterhouses yeah. 
I've, I've got enough knowledge that I don't need to go there. And actually, I did go through a stage in my life where I, I did so much work with rescue animals and abused animals and everything. It was actually detrimental because I was staying in a pity vibration. Yeah. And, and I had to sort of go through that learning curve to realize that I wasn't being very constructive then in my actions when I was stayed there. But that was a stage I had to go through to sort of then realize how I could be more constructive in where I was putting my energy. Yeah. And I think, you know, I strongly believe in a placebo effect and I strongly believe in the nocebo effect. And to tell huge swathes of the population, just for an example, say, say if some of this stuff is right, let's just say for a scenario, what, what good is that going to do saying you're all going to die? It will just that constructive. It will create more fear. It will create a huge wave of illness. Whereas actually, we know there's so many healing modalities out there. Mind body, you know, whatever resonates with that person as an individual. That let's let's put our energy there, perhaps, and that might move us forward a lot quicker. I totally agree. Just imagine, just imagine now. I mean, there's so many millions of people in the truth movement across the uh, across the world, right? Imagine if every single person stopped sharing the same old regurgitated stuff now and started talking about new earth, started talking yeah. about the new healing centers, started talking about how we're going to treat animals properly, talking about how we're going to cleanse our water, talking about how we're going to, you know, um, police things and, and have our military and stuff like that working. Just imagine what we could create like that if everybody focused, you know, and, and um, as you said earlier, Joe Dispenza is a great example of this. Get a number of people in a room focus on one thing and boom yeah. it happens instantly and and this is this is where I I'll be honest with you I've become very distant from the truth movement because yeah. it just isn't serving me anymore my life is going to a much higher level frequency and it isn't that I've forgotten that or I've forgotten my roots you know I was a speaker at the protests and all of those kind of things and I even spoke very recently at a protest but it was to bring the consciousness up because everybody else is talking about this and talking about and I was like if I'm going to do this I need to be able to speak about what I would like to speak about and they were like of course we'd love you to and of course at the end of it I probably had about 50 people come and say to me thank you so much that's the message that we needed we don't need to hear about this anymore or the numbers or the argy bargy or, you know, what's going on or who's arguing with who. Like, we're kind of tired of that now. Yeah. yeah. And those people, like we were saying, Bryce, earlier, those people that do need to hear that will hear that and, and they'll be naturally drawn and resonate with the people that are going through that, uh, are doing that message. And so there's no judgment in all of this. We're sort of sharing our journeys that we've been through and where we're at and everyone will be on their own journey and yeah. recognizing as we always say you know is this serving me is this serving me now is this what i need to hear now is yeah. a really good question to keep asking yourself i think for and i don't want to speak for the three of us but i know for me specifically the the dark stuff the hard stuff that that i want to step away from now was so important when I found it because that was the catalyst that made me start questioning, questioning mm -hmm. and as Catherine and I, but, and, and, and I don't need to look at somebody sent me a long time ago. Somebody sent me a recording, um, of a little person, little being, um, who was, I'm trying to be careful about what I say, who was at that restaurant in DC. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was a recording of this, this, little being crying because somebody was in there you guys know and i listed two seconds up and i shut it off and i sat there and just started bawling because i couldn't hear it i don't need to hear that stuff to understand what's happening i don't need to be face to face with the stress the atrocities but what's happened to understand what is actually happening and i know what's happened and now I, and as Catherine and i said in our last episode like after you kind of wade yourself through that and you start realizing that there is an illusion happening there is something going on then you start asking why, why have they done this to us? Why? And the excitement for me is that, oh, there's something really powerful, really magical and really special about yeah. humanity. And yeah. they don't want us to know. So what is that? Yeah. That's what I want to start focusing on. Yeah, why good. were they covering this up? Who are we? My friend Stephanie and I say all the time, who are we? Like, who are we? 
what, I love that. Like, let's let's look at that because there's obviously something very powerful, very powerful about Absolutely. us. And and what I love about what you've just said, Bryce, is that we've we've taken this and we've really ignited our passion. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have done half of the things that I've done in the last two years if it hadn't been for things like that video that you just spoke of. You know, like, I mean, I've spoken in front of thousands of people at protests. I've, you know, created all of these different things, started healing, sent, you know, that it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened if we hadn't had that passion ignited. And, you know, it, exactly what you said, Catherine, divine timing. All of us are divinely placed. We need people that are still sharing that stuff so that they can help the people that are going through their journey. It's just not me anymore. It exactly. might be you, it might not be you anymore. And there's no judgment for that, you know, still going on or still the same information being shared because it will resonate, like you say, with the people that are there for it to resonate with. You know, and just imagine, um, I've often thought about this, and I'd, I'd love to hear you your uh, opinions on it. Imagine if the whole world had woken up at the same time. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it would said it all. Yeah. <laughs> be chaos. Well, it's funny, you know, we, we've been told, and this has kind of been annoying me lately. Um, I know I've talked to Catherine about this. I know we have to be careful. Like, I use the term movie a lot on my channel because of censorship. Um, but I think a lot of people have taken that whole, this is just a movie and they don't understand exactly what that means. And they're just sitting back and like letting other people do stuff. Yeah. You know, when Mr. T said all those years ago, um, the storm is coming. What storm, Mr. President, what storm, Mr. President said three times, what storm? And he said, you'll see my understanding of that is we're the storm and it's not us. It's not us having a battle. It's us going, you know what? This is on illusion. And I'm going to figure out how powerful I am. And then we're going to work on that together. And that vibration is going to be that storm yeah. that takes down the illusion. It, yeah. it has to. I love that. I love that. And, and that makes, that really links nicely with how I feel about it. Because I've, I've been saying for a very long time, nobody is coming to save you. Mm. Nobody. You know, like I love the work that Mr. T did. I love the work that other people have done. Nobody is coming to save you. And too many people have sat back on their laurels and are waiting for certain characters like Mr. T to make a comeback to rescue them. And quite frankly, we've wasted time because of that. Yeah. And that's now the is the time. That's the old system. Mm. Yeah, exactly. how do it for you? You got to save exactly. yourself. Exactly. And it's time to just like whatever feels right to you. You might be like, well, I'm just going to go for a walk. Great. That walk will generate something for you to take forwards. If you're like, yeah, but I don't know what to do. I need somebody to direct me. Just do what feels right. And mm -hmm. trust me, the gold will start to flow. Yeah. I had no idea that I would be helping create a plan for the UK to get out of this mess. Like never in a million years. I always wondered why I was a project manager on the trading floor. I always wondered why I had to do global projects and stuff. And now I'm like, aha, now it makes sense. But it didn't make sense when this stuff started being presented to me. I didn't realize that we had to collapse all of the systems. I didn't realize, and I've actually had firsthand in the last two years of how corrupt the police is, how corrupt, you know, the military and, and not everywhere. And I'm not saying everybody, but there is a massive proportion of it. Yeah. And I've had to experience some of that firsthand in the last couple of years so that I get it because I didn't get it before. You know, I, I would never have comprehended before that somebody could be sent to prison yeah. when they were innocent. Like I couldn't, like, I just couldn't get my head around that. Now I've witnessed it and I've witnessed how people can throw slander and stuff and end up getting other people in. Like it's, but I look at it as a gift. This yeah. is the thing because I'm like, wow, now I've got the insights. Now I can offer that knowledge in how we're going to get out of this mess and how we can restructure this stuff. It's so funny. Every time we speak, Lucy, it's like absolutely spooky to me, the synchronicities, because I was a um, global project manager as well. I had my own project management company before I then went <laughs> on to the more holistic stuff. And I think I've spoken with both of you before that, you know, I've had so many different careers and so many seemingly unlinked. And, and, and like at the start of all this, I sat there and laughed to myself one day because suddenly I saw exactly 
how these all linked and have got to me to where I am today. And yet it had been so diverse and it, it really did. I literally did laugh outside. And when one of the things you said earlier about, well, we do it because we can take it. At one of my really important, jo- most important job from the external point of view, that's what they always just say to you, Catherine, we're saying this to you because you're the one that can take it. And it used to really piss me off because I was like, well, I'm not a dumping ground for all the people that can't. But now I see why. And at the time, I didn't. Um, it's since- actually a huge compliment for mm-hmm. you. It's actually, it's actually a huge compliment, right, that they thought that you were strong enough. But at the time, it's like, I don't get paid enough for this. And exactly. I don't have enough hours in the day for this. And why are you picking on me? What about them? Like, there's boys here doing it, you know? It's really quite interesting, isn't it? But everything it's served fun. us. Mm. It's just it. The excitement, you know, sort of comes from all of us. And I think, you know, this is a thing is this is why we wanted people to talk about their passions, because it does not matter what your passion is. We yeah. need all of the different things. We need all the players on the football pitch. You know, you've got to have a goalkeeper and strikers without one. You know, it doesn't work. And um, this is what I love is just seeing the people that are stepping up and what they're doing. I mean, some of my friends and clients that what they've achieved over the last two years is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. When all of the odds were stacked against them as well, you know. Absolutely. Couldn't get out to see people, couldn't interact with people. And and it has literally sorted out, like, you know, it really sifted through the weeds to be able to, to grow properly, hasn't it? It's absolutely. amazing. And, and, and normal people just... And I don't mean this in the way it's going to come out, but I'm going to say it so people can comprehend it. Like basic, normal people doing extraordinary things right now. You know, like it's, I'm, I'm in awe of so many people around the world. I look at them and I'm like, I, like I'm their biggest cheerleader. I don't know them from Adam, but I'm cheering them on because even if that one little thing, that one little, you know, bulb that they've um, uh, planted this year, it, it comes up, it, you know, it's going to be huge for humanity. And I think that's what's important right now. It doesn't matter if you love animals or love humans or love food or love and it, like just figure out what it is and and just go do something in alignment with that that's that's all we can encourage right now I love that you said that Lucy because I know I I, I laugh because I've had people um accuse me of being a princess Diana that I have a mask on which I don't then <laughs> I don't and I'm no mask here guys and I'm literally younger than William so Thanks a lot. No, <laughs> but, um, but, um, I've also had people, uh, believe that I'm her daughter. I'm not, I'm not at all. Um, I've had people ask me if I'm a Kennedy. I'm not. And I've seen that a lot. I'm just Bryce Watson from Atlanta, Georgia. Like that's all I am, you know? And, and I love that you say that because it, it, it and I've told, I don't know if we've talked about on screen or off screen, Catherine, but it kind of, it's funny, but it kind of makes me mad sometimes because I'm like, why do we have to be somebody famous yeah. in order to actually do something? We're the old paradigm. Though. It's the yeah. old paradigm, right? Only people that have got lots of money and lots of fame and lots of support can do this stuff. Well, we're writing, re- rewriting the record books, right? That's what we're doing here right now. We're changing it. Like I'm just some normal girl that was born in Bournemouth in, in England, you know, to a normal mum and dad and had a normal life. But you know what? I know I'm going to help lead the UK out of this stuff. Like mm. I, I know that I don't, that's not my ego speaking. I just know it because I'm doing it. Mm. Yeah. And that goes back to the whole idea of like, what are they hiding? That we're magic. That we're magic. You're just as everybody, you're just as magic as Princess Diana. You're just as magic as any celebrity you idolize. And we shouldn't be idolizing celebrities anyway. We should be respecting people, but understanding we are all sovereign beings. We all have that spark of life inside of us. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're on the cover of a magazine or, you know, just living in the Midwest in a housewife with no social media, you're still just as magical. And I, I get people asking, asking us too, I'm sure Catherine too, like, what can I do? I don't know what to do. Just being, a, just holding that vibration is enough sometimes because you are enough. You yeah. are enough. And I love it. it. It's so, you were saying I was, I used to teach my sort of classes in the morning. I thought that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. But when we shut down the Shala that I was running my program out of shut down as well. And I went through this whole like dark night of the soul. Oh my God, what am I going to do? This was my life. And then all of a sudden here comes, I started 
if you had told me five years ago, I would have a channel. I would have laughed at you. <laughs> you know, like if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Cause I guarantee you the universe has a way more exciting plan for you yeah. than yeah. you could ever plan for yourself. So just, I like that you just take one step at a time. Cause you will start getting the information. Yeah. It'll come. Absolutely. And, and what you've just said there really resonates with something that happened on Friday on Friday, I was doing loads of stuff and I was meditating and I just kept getting this vision of, you know, the gods and the goddesses and, you know, the, 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 the people that were like, yay, they've got us here in the past, just sat around a boardroom table, you know, kind of pulling all of these ideas together and just allowing everybody to recognize that they are magic. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's the vision that we need to keep holding is that you were chosen to be here. Like you are more than magical and you are going to unpick whatever it is that you've gone through. And you are going to one day look at yourself and be like, wow, I did it. Yeah. It makes me laugh when you said this. And I think throughout all of this, you have to maintain a sense of humor, most important yourself. Because when you were saying that, Bryce, I was thinking no one's ever thought I was ever anyone like that. <laughs> Sorry. Come on, guys. Who am I going to be? I'll be <laughs> Let me um, tell everybody, if you saw a picture of my mom and my dad, I'm their child. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm their child. Trust me, I'm their child. <laughs> so It's just so funny. And I, I think, yeah, it's very exciting. Here in the UK, the bulbs are coming up. Spring is on its way early. Isn't yeah. it early, Lucy, as well? I'm so and, happy. Um, the horses are kicking their heels up in the field and things are looking pretty rosy, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. We're, we're, we're definitely on the road out. I feel that there will be a couple of hiccups along the way. Yeah. But that's okay because we've dealt with that for the last two years. And, you know, we are changing the world. We're not just, you know, stepping out of a situation that we've been in. No, 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 no. We're changing the world. For that to happen, we've had to go through this stuff. We've had to create absolute trauma and, you know, dramas, for want of better words, for us to be able to go, oh, we're not going to do that again. We're not going to make those mistakes again. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a big deal that we're doing here. And everybody watching, you were picked. Fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. That just oh, sounds great. For having me. Now, Lucy, you've got obviously I will be putting Bryce and Lucy's links below, but what's the best way for people to connect with you? Um, Instagram is probably where I hang out the most. Um, so Catherine can pop my link there. Yeah. Um, but I'll also give you my email address. Um, if you need to email, you can email in and my assistant, bless her heart, will deal with it. <laughs> And she'll get hold of me pretty easily. So, um, yeah. And, and likewise, if you ladies want to send me over your details, I can pop that on as well. Be good. Fantastic. Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed that as much as I have. It was a really lovely chat, ladies. And hopefully to be continued. I for sure. It. For sure. That. Lovely to meet you, Bryce. You thanks for having me again, Catherine. Take care. See you soon, girls. Lots Bye. of love. Thanks all.